So here's a worked example of a profit maximization in which we will apply the methods uh, we learned for univariate um, maximization of a function. So let's first write down what the cost function is. That is uh, the thing that in this example will drive the results. It's a cubic function where our argument is Q, the quantity. Now we also learn that the price is set at 60, so that's like a small supplier in a competitive market. We should recognize that the implicit domain of this function is from zero to infinity, so we shouldn't expect to produce negative quantities of our product. So this is the starting situation. What we now need to figure out is what the revenue and then what the profit is. So the revenue is P times Q, so P is 60, so it's 60 times Q. With this we can go to calculate the profit, which is the revenue minus the cost, both functions of Q, the quantity, and if we now substitute into this formula what we know about the revenue and what we know about the cost, we will find the results. Remember, the cost function is this cubic function which we have up here. So let's merely substitute for the revenue and the cost. So we have 60Q minus, and then in parentheses, the cost function. So it's important that you use that parenthesis alternatively, that you realize that the signs in the cost function change. As we have two terms in Q, we can uh, slightly simplify that. We're left with minus q cubed plus 16q squared minus 40q. That's because we have 60q and minus 100q. So that's 40q minus 40q minus 100. So what we need to do next is we need to find the first and the second derivatives of this profit function. These are fairly straightforward. We just need to use the um, exponent rules for derivatives. Negative 3q squared plus 32q minus 40 is the first derivative. And the second derivative is negative 6q plus 32. So we will need this first and the second derivative to make our arguments about where the maxima where the maximum of this profit function is. First, we need to find the stationarity points, and we do that by setting the first derivative equal to zero. So let's just uh, write this condition down. It's uh, very important, so there's no harm in stating it. Negative 3q squared plus 32q minus 40 is equal to to zero. So now you need to solve this quadratic equation. You use whatever your algorithm of choice is. I will just give the results here and you should of course check that you can replicate these. The uh, uh, roots of this quadratic equation are at the following values. The first one is at uh, approximately 1.45 and the second one is at approximately 9.22. So these are the two roots of the equations. You should note that economically, what we found are the two points at which the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. So what we now need to do is we need to uh, check the sign of the second derivative at the stationarity points. So we'll just plug in the our two roots, 1.45, for instance, uh, for starters, into the second derivative, which is here. So you can see 6 times 1.45, that's less than 12, so we have approximately negative 12 plus 32, so that's something positive. That's all we need to know, is it positive or negative? And uh, let's calculate the second derivative at the second root, 9.22. So we have 6 times approximately 9, so that's 54, a bit more. Uh, so we have minus 54 plus 32, so that's negative. So we know that the second derivative at this second stationarity point is negative. Now you can also think of the behavior of the uh, uh, second derivative as we go beyond our two stationarity points that will make 
uh, graphing the profit function slightly easier. So uh, if you go to the left, smaller values of 1.45, you'll see that the second derivative is larger than uh, zero. So that will be a convex part of the function, whereas for values larger than 9.22, the second derivative will always be smaller than zero. So that will actually be a concave part of the uh, function. So from this information, in particular the sign of the second derivatives at the two stationarity points, we can conclude that we have at q equals 1.45, or I call it q0 equals 1.45, this is a local minimum, because the second derivative is larger than zero, and at uh, a quantity of 9.22, we have a local maximum. So why, why do we say it's a local minimum and maximum? Firstly, we have a, um, a closed set here because our uh, domain finishes at zero and includes zero. So we know we really have to look at the value of the profit function at zero itself. But even if that wasn't the case, we have discovered from the argument above that our profit function has a concave and a convex region. So our sufficient conditions for global, for global optimum isn't given. So to find out where the global profit maximum is, we now also need to check the profit, the value of the profit functions at both the stationarity points and at our boundary points, which in our case is just the quantity of zero. So that's a, this is because we have this closed set, but also because we weren't able to establish any of the sufficient conditions for a global maximum. So here's our profit function. It's actually also at the bottom of the screen we will have to plug in three values into this profit function. Let's start with the boundary point, zero. That's particularly easy because then the profit will just be negative 100. At the first stationarity point, 1.45, if you plug this in as Q, uh, you will find that the profit here is negative uh, and it's uh, approximately Actually, I'm more just using rounding, so I just use equal. And these are rounded numbers, negative 127.4. And the profit at n the second stationarity point is 107.6. So from these three values, these are the three important points of our functions, the boundary point and the two stationarity points we can uh, just plot them, them into our diagram. And uh, we should of course note that the profit at a quantity of zero just reflects the fixed cost of negative 100. Now a profit function is gonna look something like uh, this so far and for values of Q larger than 9.22, uh, it will bend down the function why can I say that? Well, we calculated before and concluded that the second derivative of that function for values of q larger than 9.22 is negative. So it will keep bending down. It will be a concave function in that region. So this is clearly our maximum, our profit maximum. Um, we know that at this profit maximum, the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue. We found a second stationary point. Turns out here is the marginal, the marginal cost is also equal to the marginal revenue, but it would produce a um, hefty loss. So this concludes this profit maximization example.